It's Sunday, March 14th, Pi Day 2021. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Well, welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, if you the links, episode number uh, 594. And we're a little bit tired because, well, in addition to being Pi Day, this is also the time that Daylight Saving Time is uh, starts. Uh, it is not savings, it is saving. I know that's a technicality, but it's true. That's the, the correct pronunciation. Uh, can you tell that uh, I've been forced to take grammar courses for work? Mm-hmm. Although technically the, the daylight saving time thing is not a uh, not part of the quiz, but you know whatever. Anyways, uh, today we we will we, we, we'll Gary. This was brought up by you. Yeah, let's let's make that perfectly clear just just <laughs> we, we, hey damon hey. and i just want to make sure that we don't take the uh responsibility of of the this topic we want to accredit it to the appropriate person that was gary i'm not really sure what that's supposed to mean we're, we're just we're just saying that we're gonna that we're guessing I'm not gonna say assume because you know what what happens when you assume but we're guessing that a lot of the audience may think that the idea for this topic was was either Damon or I and we just want to say just want to be clear it wasn't either of our topics or maybe the audience doesn't care who picked the topic like we're we're just I mean, we're just being careful. I mean, also that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking maybe the audience doesn't care who picks the topic on any random week. That the fact that y'all have to like put this preface out there. I think like... the reason we're putting the preface out there is because <laughs> it would be very easy, and I'm going to use the word to assume that gear that Jeff or I would have been like, let's talk about this. I yeah, mean, let's talk about no, this. Let's like, talk about like, this. let's let's just keep it. Let's just keep it honest. Like, more than likely, this is probably going to go down a rail, and it's probably going to be a lot of me and, and Jeff talking, because we're D and D nerds. But still, <laughs> okay. I, I literally have all the books on D and D Beyond, and including pre-ordering Candlekeep Mysteries and the uh, Ravenloft uh, uh, one that's coming up. <laughs> it's already pre-ordered. <laughs> As soon as it's available on D and D Beyond, I got it, and, <laughs> and I have everything else. <laughs> uh, now, is so is that that Funko Pop? Uh, uh, is that Grog? Yes, that's Grog. I guessed correctly. Okay, actually, I think All you right. might have mentioned one time that you had gotten the Grog <laughs> Funko Pop. Yeah. That was at some point. I am so amused by the irony of this moment <laughs> that. Suddenly, you turned in, both of you turned into the peanuts teacher, and I heard wah, 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 because I was reading the live chat in our YouTube stream, and Grace says, well, it is interesting that the choice came from the least blatantly geeky of the three of you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll take that. No, that's fair. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, David and I are much more geeky than you are. In regards to this. I'm not saying you're not geeky. I'm just saying we're more geeky. Okay. Uh, so to catch people up, because <laughs> they may they may not know anything. Um, so this this is kind of how I wanted to give like just a little bit of a thing. There's going to be so, a whole series of links on our blog website you're uh, in a couple of days when this goes uh, to public live. So D&D, um, Dungeons and Dragons is what it stands for, um, is said to be the start of modern role-playing games in the role-playing industry. Uh, there's going to be a link to a Wikipedia article that like has tons of information about like how it started back in the 70s. There's all these editions that have come about, um, so on and so forth. To, to be uh, fair, just to, to mm-hmm. clarify, it's D&D 5th edition for the resurgence of role-playing games. Sure. Uh, there comes the geekdom. Um, so, 
<laughs> Fourth edition. My, yeah. Well, no. So <laughs> this is interesting. So th- this is a uh, kind of a statement uh, item that I'm sort of quoting. It's a uh, in which D and T players have been portrayed as the height of geeks and nerds, as the focus of much like nerd slash gaming humor. And then the quote is in 2017, 9 million people watched others play D and D on Twitch, immersing themselves in the world of game without ever having to pick up a die or cast a spell, sure. which is interesting. So there's an article from USA today, actually the, uh, a year ago, I thought it was this January, but it was a year ago. Um, it's titled dungeons and dragons had fallen on trouble, troubled times. The role-playing games fifth edition changed everything. Mm-hmm. So this article is actually pre-pandemic. And what kind of prompted me to, to bring this up was I thought in the past year with the pandemic, uh, with COVID and all that, that at least for my outside world observation, D&D really kind of came forward or came through. And I was surprised by that because people weren't supposed to be getting together like Mm -hmm. in person to game. But as the article, I think kind of describes and what I've been learning is that it's moved into all these different spaces and that technology has had a huge effect um, on it. And so it it really kind of got me thinking. And this article was really interesting about how like these D and D groups were kind of coming up uh, unexpectedly Mm-hmm. And um, it does also talk about like um, there's a section called the digital age has helped demystify Dungeons and Dragons for new players. <clears throat> according, it says, according to a D&D fact sheet, more than 7,500 unique broadcasters streamed live games for more than 475 million minutes when watched in 2017, wow. which is like, right, like almost four years ago. And then it does go on to talk about critical role. And the money raising, um, and all that kind of stuff. An animated television show because everybody wanted an animated television show with their first campaign. Yeah. Well, thanks to eleven million dollars, which they were only looking for seven hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, in the world of D and D, I believe last March seventeenth, so almost a year ago, a what is this? A new product was released. Um, The Explorer's Guide to Wildmont Adventure. Wildemount. Sure. (laughs) Wildemount. Explorer's Guide to Wildemount is the critical role uh, campaign guide for their current campaign setting. Which I have a copy of in my office. (laughs) And I have a... Oh, uh, I have a digital version of because I have every single D and D book and uh, on D and D Beyond because uh, I'm done with having the, like paper. Although there's been times uh, in my D, I mean, that I've kind of been wanting to have the book in hand so I could just quickly flip through it. Uh, because, <laughs> I'm like, oh, now I understand having hard copies. <laughs> there's, a, there's a beauty to having physical copies. There's a beauty to having them online. I when, will say when I that, know where it is, I just need to flip through it. <laughs> Sometimes it's faster say, than searching. Like, um, click, click, click. The, I agree that this resurgence is kind of a thing. It has definitely been a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, as someone who, I actually, gosh, how long has it been? Not too long after I moved here. So it's been a few years. Clo- we're getting close to 20. Um but when I moved here, not too long after I moved here, um, met Jim, I met a couple of friends who were really big on like um, tabletop role playing games, like TT RPG. And um, I had never, I had known about it, and I knew about it like in like middle school and and, and such, but it never really, I never really caught on to it, but. Then um, they were very big about it, big into it and, and and telling those stories and doing those things that it made it interesting to me. Now, for those who don't know, and this is, you know, kind of a, you know, call out. I started with um, an Eberron campaign in D&D 3.5. So, Ditto. Yeah. So for everyone to kind of know, you have probably have no idea what that means, but um that's sort of the 
prior to fifth edition, I would consider it the more one of the more popular versions because it's the one that kind of spawned Pathfinder and all of that stuff. But anyway, so um, I enjoyed it so much that we ended up, I mean, I've been playing tabletop roller playing games ever since. Like, um, I didn't do fourth edition. Sorry. Um, sorry, Lloyd. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, when fifth edition came out, I was worried. Um, it just didn't, you know, it's another edition. It's a whole bunch of other books. It's a whole bunch of things that you have to, you know, potentially learn or relearn or unlearn. And that became part of the problem in a sense for me was I, I, I knew what I knew and I didn't want to necessarily learn more. However, what they did with fifth edition, it's streamlined, it's accessible, it's easy to like learn. Um, it's easier to build characters. It's easier to, to, to do everything. And the best part is because of when it was built, they were able to add, like digital age was very, very prominent and they were able to do things to make it easier to like build characters and do things. I had with 3.5, um, uh, we somehow Jim or not Jim, I think found it actually a um, Excel spreadsheet that you could put things like your numbers in and it would eventually generate with macros, a character sheet that had all the things that you needed in it. And that was good, but it was not perfect. It had its flaws with sites like D and D beyond and other like apps and such. It's super easy to just like create a character and start playing um to point now it, it might i don't want to say it's too easy but it's it's easier yeah and and i think one of the things with between previous editions and 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 fifth edition is the is that streamlined fact in and they've uh well fourth edition kind of tried to simplify it mm-hmm because it, it they did kind of like like uh, you don't have to worry about spell slots. It's called powers. You can mm, you got encounter mm. powers. You got daily powers. You've got uh, uh, um, odd use powers or something like that. I don't remember what they call yeah. them. Yeah, um, yeah. Which which I thought was an interesting dynamic. They had the the, the minor action, the major action, the, the movement, and uh, but I think one yeah. of the things that they were trying to get it more accessible was trying to get it more to be like they they were very much kind of turning it into how a computer game would play because mm-hmm. they were yeah. like oh everybody's into computer games nowadays so so we should make it to to be analogous to that and i think that's where a lot of <laughs> old school people didn't like it to be fair i i for the brief time that I played some uh, fourth edition, it, uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fine. Um, uh, it just I fell out of being able accessible with the group. So mm. the only reason why I'm like fourth edition eh, is because generally it is not a popular edition. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I do like I do like how they they basically with fifth edition they've taken a lot of the things that you like about previous editions and just just streamlined as you said streamlined it and, and made it so that you don't mm-hmm. have like this huge list like there isn't like fifty different knowledge knowledge. Uh, uh, roles uh there's no such skill as dungeoneering anymore <laughs> um uh, it just ends up being some survival or nature mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. you know a more obvious sort of things where we're looking at categories and uh progression um the numbers don't get really out of control 
And by yeah. limiting how much of the more powerful uh, magic items that you can have with the two mint slots, mm-hmm. um, I made it so, like, I was listening to um, the uh, Critical Hit podcast, oh. which is different than Critical Role, it's completely different. And when they were running on fourth edition, and they were doing magic item, getting magic items, magic items, magic items, magic items, magic items, magic items. There was just like a shit ton of magic items that they were get, getting, and they would have like be completely decked out in mag- magic items. While in fifth edition, they're like, well, to keep this simple, so you don't have to worry about all these magic item bonuses and stuff. It's only have like mm. three. <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> I'm looking at Gary. Gary, Gary, Gary kind of like his eyes glazed over. And well, you're muted. Here. That's the first thing I muted myself. <laughs> Second of all, um, I zoned out because uh, I was messaging because uh, someone's here and they were trying to use a printer and I don't think it's online and I'll take care of it later. And <laughs> <laughs> we're also discussing brunch plans afterwards. So, you know. Ah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, it's it's been so. I will ask since Gary, you're the one that came up with this topic. Haha. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. You mentioned in the past that you, while mm-hmm. you're not, you're not on the current with D and D. You have mm-hmm. played before. Yes. So here's the shocking revelation to our audience for those that missed it somehow before and did not know. I played Dungeons and Dragons in my freshman year of college, and that would have been 1992 to 1993. Mm -hmm. So I would have been working off of, according to the Wikipedia timeline, the 1983 basic set third version, maybe? Mm. Maybe. Mm. I think it was Um, was some fans D&D. So, yeah. Yeah. don't know anything about the rules cyclopedia stuff so yeah that like we things were very different back then and this Mm. is 30 years ago almost so yeah um and and here's the thing i enjoyed dungeons and dragons um what i realized i liked about it was the camaraderie like the ability Mm -hmm. to hang out with other people who were kind of like fantasy geeky minded um and the 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 dm that we had <clears throat> the dungeon master for the campaign was kind of crazy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh <laughs> like adult inappropriate at the weirdest times had a wild imagination um and really liked to screw with the group <laughs> at any moment um yeah it was and i think that's really kind of what it made it entertaining um but i think the one thing that i did find a bit challenging is the pace like Mm -hmm. how long it takes to achieve things to get Mm -hmm. stuff done and i was like and mind you i think in in our group there was six of us Mm -hmm. seven of us so when everybody has to take a turn, do you, yeah. like I was just like, hold yeah. okay. It, it's hmm. again thinking back, like especially older editions, like turns and things like that always took time. And even now, I you know, you know, as I've even when we're playing um, fifth edition, you still have that kind of issue because that's just the way it is. Um, like your character does so much, you can try to think of things that you could do beforehand. But if you're lower in the initiative, like someone does something before you and it kind of changes everything that's happening on the battlefield, then you kind of have to rethink your original thought. So you kind of have to figure out what else to do. And that becomes difficult. And then if you, again, if you're new or if you're unfamiliar with what your character can do or what your player, your, your, um, you know, spells you can cast and, Da, 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 then that kind of adds more time onto it as well. But um, 
there are ways to help a little bit, but it's it's harder. Um, I I have a couple of, like so I'll I'll go ahead and mention some of the links I have. So a lot of the links that I brought to this chat uh, to this uh, page. Um, I'll talk about the first group later, but the first one, the second group of, is like how to play DM, like info and fun channel. And it's really just like a lot of resources for if you are interested, especially in fifth edition, let's just mm -hmm. put it out there. Um, it's videos on how to build characters, how to, you know, um, um, different, the different like subclasses, all that other stuff. Um, if you want to DM or GM the game, you can, um, it has, there are people that run things, uh, have videos about like how to, like we were talking about how to make, um, combat faster, how to help with some of those things. Cause it can lag, especially when you have like six, 10 players, depending on what you're doing. Um, and um, on top of it, it's, you know, there, in, in addition to it, there's a lot of fun ones and funny ones. Um, uh, one of the big ones that I have up here is uh, One Shot Questers. Um, he is famous on TikTok. He's done a lot of like D&D related um, fun, funny moments to kind of have fun with it. Using a lot of the tropes that people think of when they think of like a bard, a wizard wizard, a barbarian, etc. So yeah. Um there's a bunch, there's a bunch of videos. There's there's a big long list. Um have fun with it. Um yeah and obviously we, too. <laughs> we 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 do D D Beyond. Um we've mentioned that a few times. So D D Beyond is a separate entity from Dungeons and Dragons, Wizards of the Coast but they allow you to purchase digital copies of the books to use. And then you can, once you have those copies, you can then use the information in them to build characters. Um, it's a resource for like um, um, info, um, finding potential players, finding potential games, all of that fun stuff. Um, it's the, I would say the top like D and D site. It's like, a shizzy. Personally, yeah, thinking. yeah. Uh, the the only thing is that the, it's not what's referred to as a virtual tabletop. It is on their list. It's just super far down on it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. But there's there's things like uh, Roll Twenty and uh, Fantasy Grounds and a, a relatively new one called Foundry. For virtual tabletops, I think there's a couple others where yeah. people can get in a uh, Discord or Skype call or or something like that and for voice and then uh, uh, play the game virtually. So there there's lots of uh, tools for that. There's an extension for for I think Chrome and Firefox um, for using your D and D Beyond character sheet. With Roll Twenty and Fantasy Grounds, mm -hmm. and I think it's supposed to work with Foundry, but it hasn't been working for me. Mm. My my Wednesday night game that I don't DM <laughs> is uh, mm. uh, 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 currently on Foundry, which is yeah. which is nice. Foundry is very cool, but it's complicated. Yeah. Um. I, I will admit, like, one of the things I do and I have enjoyed with d d kind of what you said, Gary, was the camaraderie, um, the community, as it were. Um, it's been very fun and interesting. Okay, sorry. thought I saw something. Um, one of the things that Jim and I have been doing recently um, uh our local convert shop literally up the street from us is doing uh, one shots. And I've talked about this before. Um, and uh, it's usually been like, like we're masked and everything and they're, we're all in this one room and it's, we're all kind of distanced enough to where it's okay. Um, but it's, uh, it's usually, uh, it's usually to say people um because they we signed up for them pretty quickly and there's only so many slots but um 
the occasional new person comes in and it's always been fun just kind of working with them and role playing and and um the people that we've are that have been kind of regulars along with us they now like they'll they'll now call us by name they know us by name they know who we are who we are they will you know you know talk to us and we, we talk before gaming and before we get started to where before it was very much a like sit down and like let's get started kind of thing um that relaxed kind of feel is makes them less intimidating so it adds to if someone new comes in to kind of enjoy that um i know i've met many people through D and role playing on the D and geek side not the other side um <laughs> and 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 it have friends that I've known for a long that I've known for a long time. The ones that I started gaming with when because they moved here, they've moved away since then. But we're still friends. We still, you know, talk every now and then. We're friends on Facebook and all that stuff. So it's very just you know intriguing the camaraderie that you build, um, especially if you were doing a long time, long term, long term campaign. Yeah. It's always fun developing uh, characters and kind of like it's an outlet in some sense um, mm-hmm. uh, because you can it can be this this other character make these big achievements like taking down a dragon or uh, uh, defeating Vecna the <laughs> god of death evil god of death or, or um, uh, something like that it's and it's it's one of those things where it, and one of the things that that I really think has <laughs> like really has gotten me into getting back into to trying to uh, get back into D and D has been uh, with Critical Role Matt Mercer whenever they're in like a big boss battle or something like that and somebody gets to that final hit he says says the magic words how do you want to do this. <laughs> And it's like after like an hour of of going through turn by turn, turn uh, beating down things, people falling, but then being healed to get back up, and and uh, all this like epic battleness. As he says says that, and I'm like yeah, which reminds me actually of like when I'm writing in WoW, and and we're on progression on a big on a boss battle and then we finally get it and we're like yeah it's and i mean we it's all about teamwork and in all of those cases thinking tactically and everything um Mm -hmm. and just some of those those precious little moments that happen also off the battlefield with the social encounters Mm -hmm. uh sneaking sneaking into a uh thing or or um most re- one of the more recent things again critical role because that's why i keep thinking of um when laura bailey's character uh jester um feeds a witch a uh cupcake was it a cupcake yeah mm-hmm. I think it was a cupcake uh which she sprinkled some dust of delicious on and she modified the uh the witch's memory to um remove a curse and then they're like like okay okay we, it's it's all done let's go let's go let's go let's go mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's all a social encounter there was no fight no battle or anything i would be i but it was I epic enjoy, <laughs> yeah i enjoy some of the, like the only thing i will say i miss with regards to doing like the one shots in particular is that it is not while there's some social time the whole point of the game essentially is the action and combat that's the way this dm runs and you know runs them because it's it's a one shot it's not meant to be a a full-on campaign um where everything essentially everything needs to be done within a few hours so you can't just you can't spend time um playing the social game and doing the social things um, you have to kind of focus on getting to the big bad at the end. 
Um, but uh, on the flip of that, I also like when you can kind of fuck things over and make fun and have fun and come up with the idea that allows you to essentially bypass a certain situation without having to have the combat. Uh, we've had that happen a few times. Um, I'm very curious how, um, like, Gary, you're talking about your bastard DM, which is what I'm calling him because he was a bastard. Because <laughs> if he, if you're throwing just random things at people and are just kind of having a little fun with them, it's good to do that when you have a a um, a, a friendly table. Like you, you're all kind of know each other or something along those lines, and you've been playing for a while. You can kind of fuck around because it's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so to back things up a little bit, just for folks who aren't necessarily aware, can you explain the differences in what you were just talking about with the one shot versus the oh, the sure. campaign kind of what? Remember, not everyone in our audience will necessarily know what DT or Dungeons and Dragons sure. is. So I can I can do that relatively quickly so a one shot is essentially a D, &D a g or dm ooh, words um a dm is essentially running an encounter it has a start middle and end and it's usually within a few hours maybe four maybe five the whole point of the session is to get from start to finish with a short amount of time you build characters are you the dm provides characters that you can use and then you run through the battle and then you that's it like that's the end of it it is a short term very one quick done. one and done like moment a campaign um is a much larger more overarching story um, there are several campaigns that have been written. There are books. Um, the, the Candle Keep Mysteries that Jeff mentioned Candle is Keep a Mysteries book. Is a book of one shots. It's a book of like one. Well, it's a book of one shots. Yeah, but it's also what's one? Oh, not that one. Not, uh, oh, Curse of Prod. Or 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 the one we're doing, which is uh, on Bears and Dragons, uh, the uh, Tyranny of Dragons campaign. Yeah. So there are there are books out there that are essentially big like stories that you can that are where you can use the book as the I think the word is module, but I could be wrong. Um, where you use the book as kind of how to keep the game going. And it's not a one day, one and done thing. It is a several day, several weeks, several month um campaign where your characters will level and gain abilities and pick up magic items and um they're you're, they're essentially telling a longer story and depending on who the, G, the dm is you mm -hmm. could be telling they could be going straight by the book or they could be flavoring it with their own thing um the we've talked about um we keep mentioning critical world but that's a perfect example of a long-running campaign setting mm -hmm. where the characters have grown from level two i think they're now level 14. so those kind of situations um yeah they're 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 meant for I, I i will say this and i'm probably being a bitch about it but they are meant for dedicated players to play from beginning to end now, sometimes your character could die. Sometimes you might get tired of playing the character and want the character to die. That's happened. Uh, <laughs> uh, or sometimes you you need a break from your character and you think another character might, you know, so you'll talk with your DM and come up with a way to bring in a new player, a new character that you yourself are playing. Um, oh, yeah. It's, I like to think of, one shots is like mini, like small, mm -hmm. and then like campaigns is like the larger story. It could have like one shots in it, but they are branches off of a longer story. Yeah, the, the, the one shots typically don't have have leveling involved. You, you're the DM says, okay, this is a level two adventure, uh, not a one shot. This is level five adventure. So you could be start 
at a certain point, but you just play at that level. Nothing really changes while a uh, campaign is an ever evolving thing uh, where like uh, some of them will, will be like when we're referred to like a, a critical role, the first campaign had different story arcs. There was the Briarwood mm-hmm. arc. There was the yeah, uh, yeah. Chroma Conclave arc. There was the Vecna arc. Three arcs in their entire adventure getting up to level 20, um, which is the max level of the current edition. And we'll keep in mind, this is just D&D. Uh, there's other awesome. role-playing games, too. Uh, also there's that, yeah. some super simple role-playing games like Honey Heist, Mm-hmm. Uh, which is literally you, you can get it for free. I can't remember where it is. Uh, you could easily search it. It's a, it's not that hard to find, but it's one page, and all it is is you have two stats. You have criminal, you have bear. That's it. Yeah. And uh, there there's a simple mechanic while we're rolling d sixes, so you're not like rolling all these different dice types. You don't. Know? You don't need like a whole bunch of dice. Actually, here, this is better. Whole bunch of <laughs> dice. Wow. <clears throat> Which, by the it's way, a really they... heavy sack that you have. Mm-hmm. That's, that's not that heavy. Uh, but <laughs> and of course, it's a standard geeky one of a crowd sack. of oil bag. Big full sack. Big hefty sack. A lot Sorry, of, uh, Damon. Just uh, let it go. Math rock. <laughs> uh, they, 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 there's also ones like Shadowrun. There's different even like systems mm-hmm. where it's like the it, it says here is the system. Now you create the world and like the special abilities mm-hmm. things too. Yeah. So don't yeah. if you if you want to role play, you don't have to use D D. And D&D doesn't have to be in any of the fantasy settings. You can make your your own own setting and even flavor some things. I think even if you even on D&D Beyond, we can you can find like laser rifles. <laughs> are things from official D&D stuff, but uh, mm-hmm. you can you can create your own things, which is another thing that's uh, great about it. Uh, it. Uses what's referred to as a D20 system, which uses the primary dice is a d20. Let's see if I've got one. There it is. So for folks that don't know, a d20 is a die, or most people want to call it a dice, but it's, it's actually single. 20-sided dice, die. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, then there's all different types of math rocks. D6s is, is the one that everybody pretty much knows. Mm, well, actually, I probably... Here, right? <laughs> so it's it's going to be interesting to see how our social media is uh, update on advertising, because recently <laughs> I keep getting an advertisement for uh, a die set that is clear but has little um, I guess pieces of plastic. I'm not quite sure inside of them that represent different pride flags. Yes, I've seen that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah the Caltrop, the uh, D4. Nice. And D8, which is like two Caltrops. <laughs> uh, there's D10s and D100s, but the D100 really is a D10, which just has a zero next to each of the, the normal numbers. Mm-hmm. And this is a regular D10. And D12. And those are your basic dice, dice types. And Love of course, shape. people are making making money out of having, making things such as a dice vault, a dice tower, dice um, tray. <laughs> so I will say this. When I found out about dice towers a couple of years ago, I want to say, I was like, get out. That's cool. I wish I'd had that when I had played. Mm-hmm. Not, that, not that you need to have it to play. Yeah. Um, I I will say that the the role playing you know uh, universe, especially for for dice, uh, 
involvement has really gotten super elaborate. There have been like, uh, I guess, I don't know if I want to call them viral, but there have been videos and, and blogs, photographs of people making custom tables for gaming. Mm-hmm. Um, DM <laughs> like, there's, like there's an entire company that creation. does that. Yeah. Yeah. So like you can have like the this DM whole like, yeah. Yeah, panel privacy screen. So the, the dungeon master can have all of their notations and everything listed up. And uh, oh. I, I've been like, wow, that's, that's pretty interesting. None of it, that really existed, but I, like, yeah. So. And that's kind of the thing. Um, I, that part of the resurgence has kind of, shown um nerds and geeks got bank um like let's just be honest (laughs) like some do not all but like some do true and 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 um there are things out there that people will spend a lot of money on to have um i remember uh when we were first when we were first starting to play like the whole idea of like the the dungeon, like the table, the gaming table where you had like all like you had like cup holders and like all like you could have like levels where things could be oh my god, like would you ever would we ever have the money to ever do it? No. Oh. But the idea behind it was like blowing your mind. Like a table right. that you use just for gaming. I mean they have them all the time. They have poker tables, they have you know, those kind of, they have pool tables, but like it, it just blew your, it blew your mind. And now there are, you know, you can buy, if, if you want a kind of die dice or set, you can probably find it somewhere. Oh, pretty. Yeah. You will probably be able to find a, a, a set of dice for whatever you your heart desires, whether that's I like really pretty colors or I like um, really fun. Uh, I want like metal and heavy clunky dice or I want um, I want dice that are each color of the rainbow so that I have, you know, I can use one set for one thing or one set for another. You can find that. You can find it. Um, and it's 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 a commodity. It's becoming a thing. Um, books, the books, the books, <laughs> like D and D and directly, and other gaming game game gaming systems out there. Like it's great, and there are even people, content creators. Like this first list I have on the site um, on the doc is um, podcasting podcast. Uh, uh, general podcasting and streams that we have um there's the obviously big one critical role and critical role in and of itself has become its own company like company (laughs) and they've got offshoots yeah and they already have offshoots they they make their own things they they have a store that has all their stuff and so they're making money as they put out content um some of the other they have a charity they actually now have a gaming company Mm mm-hmm yeah. So, can you give a little bit of history, or I probably can real quick. Um, so, Critical Role for those that don't know is actually a whole fandom now, uh, in, in a way. Um, but basically, it was a group of people that got together to play D and D. However, um, on the website, it explains about that. Uh, we'll get to that. I know what you're laughing about. Um, <laughs> that the um, I'm just basically. It's turned into over half a million views every week. Um, So, and it says the show itself features seven popular voice over actors diving into epic adventures led by the veteran game master, Matthew Mercer. Let's, let's rephrase this to be a little more, more uh, fun, fun. It's a bunch of dirty ass voice actors sitting around and playing Dungeons and Dragons, which they basically Matt Mercer says at the beginning of every single show. And, and these are these are uh, major voice actors like Matthew Mercer, the d- d- dungeon master, um, has done several voices for several games. One of the the, the more popular recent ones has been um, McCree in Overwatch. Mm-hmm. Liam O'Brien has done voices. Uh, actually, Liam O'Brien, Laura Bailey, 
uh, 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 Talis and Jaffe all awesome. have done voices in, in World of Warcraft. Liam O'Brien was Illidan Stormrage. Laura Bailey is uh, Jaina Proudmore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Talis and Jaffe is Darian Morgra- Mograine. So when when the new this latest expansion, which Death Knights are a big thing in, uh, uh, Darian Mograine is is one of the leaders. Leaders, it was just so nice hearing Talis and Jaffe's voice again, and I believe even uh, all the rest of the voices in WoW too, just not as major voices. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Talis and Jaffe was actually a child actor. I can't remember what show he was on. He was in the movie Mr. Mom. That's it. Um, I mean, in like uh, uh, Sam um, has actually produced some television shows too, or some cartoons. He's won Emmys. He, yeah, he won an Emmy, which he's he uh, has to lout for everybody, but that's also uh, Sam. <laughs> yeah. So it's very it, there. There is a very diverse. Um, cast of actors well not diverse cast let me just let's be honest um it's a very they have very a well a breadth of of acting talent and they use that in the game and that's kind mm-hmm. of i think for those who have, if you've never watched or listened to critical role that's the the magic of it it's not just one person talking in their voice the entire time it is you're getting your their characters voices and the d the dm matt is able to spine just come up with various voices for the different characters he's playing the npcs non-player characters uh, that he has to create and put on you know so that the story can kind of keep going Mm -hmm. so that kind of helps with those aspects of it as well and that's i think personally for me is what makes it popular in a sense is that they are they're telling the story and it becomes immersive because they react, respond, speak in their character voices. And you know when their character is speaking as opposed to when they are speaking. Yeah. And it ends up being that uh, outside of like combat, um, uh, the the rest of it, the, the actual role play is it's basically like an improv show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm. with actual trained actors um uh doing doing improv so yeah um so this is i want everybody to to realize this is the epitome of D &D. this is the the high note this is the the highbrow thing like this is the utter ideal of D &D. this is not going to be like any of the games that you play, unless you're playing with a bunch of nerdy ass actors. Also true. So, so, it, so the big thing is, is it like if you're going to DM or anything, you are not Matt Mercer. You can learn from Matt Mercer. You can take things that Matt Mercer does. Uh-oh. In fact, he he Why he's not? like, go ahead and steal steal for me. But you are not Matt Mercer. <laughs> People have this like like oh, I'm such a bad bad DM, but. All your your players are like that was a great time that was fun that was great, you were great. Uh, but yeah, if you weren't weren't to Matt Mercer levels, that's okay. He's he's the one to strive for, but it's very hard to hit. Don't worry about it. Like I don't, and, uh, I I steal yeah. from him all the time for my my DMing. But the one big thing I know is. I am not Matt Mercer. I am not Chris Perkins, which is uh, actually an employee of um, uh, uh, D- Wizards of Coast D. D. And uh, he's done several uh, things like Acquisitions Incorporated. Oh, that's another one. Probably put it on there. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, the uh, PvP uh, people put on. Uh, it's It's the big thing is he is for any of these really, 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 really good DMs. Just realize you're not them. Learn from them. You can improve, maybe get up to somewhat their level. But like Matt Mercer, he's a trained voice actor. <laughs> he's mm-hmm. he's 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 trained in improv. Uh, unless you've gone through all of that training and uh, you can can do do voices like like him, you're not going to reach his level. 
but that's okay. That's not bad. Um, as yeah. long as your players yeah. are having fun, uh, then, and, and on the reverse side, players just realize your DM is not Matt Mercer. <laughs> just yeah. as long as you're having fun. So, it, which is one of the, the kind of like the, the downsides to critical role is a lot of people are trying to live up to be Matt Mercer. And yes. it's causing like they're thinking they're a bad DM, but they're not. They're they're a great DM. It's just they're just different. Yes. Okay, that's my rant about. So, that. here's a question that I have. Um, so in the the article, the USA Today article, it says at the forefront of D and D, um, thanks to live streaming services, celebrity endorsements, frequent pop culture references, and above all, all else, an accessible game, the D and D community is thriving and eager to roll initiative again. Because it kind of talks about how there was a lay period that it wasn't doing so hot. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of D and D itself was on the wane until the fifth edition came around, mm -hmm. and then uh, the franchise kind of got another boost in 2018 and 2019 when the 45th anniversary of the game came up. So what I'm curious about thinking about the, the history and how like, it's kind of like how it ebbs and flows. And now we're on this like peak again. What do you, what do you think about the critical role impact on it? And by that, I mean, like I'm, I'm going to say that obviously that has increased popularity, awareness, Mm -hmm. uh, enthusiasm, but at the same time, like your, your caveat recently, which I thought was really good, but interesting is like, do not expect if you join a D and D group, like if you don't really know much about Dungeons and Dragons and you learn about it via critical role, do not expect your, uh, any group that you join to be like critical role. Have you noticed, or are you aware within the, the fandom, I guess, a desire shift movement, whatever, like, to be more like critical role to be like more animated entertaining while playing mm -hmm. I, I don't know like getting, getting more the, into the, the role play because um, the, the group that i was with that mm -hmm. was kind of a given we weren't all actors but i think we were all like of the arts mm -hmm. uh, yeah all of us so and it was probably and we were all actually now that i think about it most of us all came from the marching band at the university that's how that kind of got started um <laughs> And the DM was a perpetual student. Like <laughs> they were in their mid twenties, <laughs> but still going to classes. Yeah, still, still, still hanging around the university. Still, sort of things. It's so funny because I think about them every once in a blue moon. I'm like, wonder, wonder, what ever happened to them? Um, <laughs> They're still in university. You know, like well, in their I mean, fifth degree. Happened, I, I mean, how long could you be a, a, a perpetually drunk student that parties and does D and D? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can see that. Well, I will say, just to kind of answer your question, um, is there uh, the effect? I think is that it is. I'll put it like this: it's kind of so, so in words that Gary, I think, will understand. It's very much like Drag Race, where something okay. very like. Like there's a show that has been that is popular that is you know gained popularity, and brings it into the mainstream. That's kind of what I think Critical Role has done. It has okay. brought it to a to the forefront of in the past where it was like this geeky thing that you know geeks and nerds and haha you know are this taboo thing that is is sacrilege you know you know if you remember all of that stuff. Um, to now where, as you it, like, like the article mentioned, like actors are indicating they're playing it, like popular, sexy, beautiful people and are Colbert. playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> That's not who I would think of when I would, when I would say but Matt words. Mercer ran a run shot for Stephen Colbert for Red Nose Day. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, but anyway. Joe Manganiello. Uh, uh, wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. What were the words that, that David used? <laughs> popular sexy okay star anyway anyway no 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 no. because no. like like i don't know about the popular factor but i've been like while listening to you i've also sort of been trolling inappropriately a lot and i'm like 
who who is hot? Oh, his name is Travis Willingham. Like, oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Fucking man. He Laura Bailey has him. Uh, it, it, he has the son named Ronan. Yeah, that's nice. So, um, that don't that don't mean shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it means you could look. No, maybe, no. maybe, maybe more. Who knows? Anyway. Nobody, nobody knows anybody's business anymore. Like <laughs> anything, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Just, yeah. just, just role play it. Just role play it. Just figure it out. There you go. Uh, but yeah, like as I was saying, like the idea behind it is that it is since it has become popular and mainstream, it is it is gained that appeal. These like I keep talking going back to the one shots because I'm about I'm going to be going to one in about ten minutes, but um, the one shots they have wait lists for people because they're that popular. They do them four times a month because they're that, now um, six times a month because they're that popular. Um, the idea behind it is so that people will like are interested and want to play. And you know this because they're gaining popularity. Go to um, sites and go to like your local comic book store and you can probably are you'll probably find out about people playing games. You'll find people playing games at home. Ask your friends. It's grown to the point where again it's not as like like do you play D D? Yeah, I play D and D. Like, let's go play some D and D. It's grown from like that kind of hush hush, like taboo kind of moment to like, like for me, like I mentioned on Christmas, like I got the books because I was happy that I had gotten the books, and I saw all these like posts, like, oh, that's so cool, like it's so great to see it. Yeah, because it has people understand it and love it. Like now, not saying that they didn't before, but I think you're more open to indicating that you are interested. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, On the flip of that, the popularity and the community can be toxic. Like, let's just Mm -hmm. call it what it is. There are people out there that get so engrossed into it that it becomes um, problematic. You were mentioning, Gary, back in the past, like, back in the day, like, you had to stop because it was interfering with your schoolwork oh inter- interfering isn't even close i almost fucked I out of, yeah of like, school altogether i mean i'm just gonna yeah. be honest about it because it, it overwhelmed i i chose to like so deep dive into it and we mm-hmm. were gaming every single week if not twice a week mm-hmm. um it just it was so much fun to do but then it was like you know it was distracting it took time and we did it in the evenings we mm-hmm. you know you'd stay up late you would sleep it i mean it was just yeah yeah it yeah. it, it like in, when you're 18, 19, you know, and did not give, we're not uh, provided proper life skills for mm-hmm. what college needs you to do. Yeah. Um, it can and, kind of be like that. And yeah. and I do want to say that Lloyd in the live chat brings up a really interesting point um, that there's a massive fear that people will be expecting critical role tile type gaming or games after seeing a show, um, any of the particular show. And, that if they themselves aren't voice actors, meaning the people participating, they won't be uh, expecting other people to be as good. So they should all uh, take away from critical role is that a good game requires everyone um, to get in. And I think that's fair. You know, I I think, you know, that um, the more enthusiastic you can be, well, controlled enthusiasm, I should say, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for a group would, would, be fun it's it's just been intriguing to me that like there kind of has been this whole thing going on um i would say probably in the past decade is really where i've noticed that um you know this hence calling it resurgence um and i don't know if that's really the right wording Mm -hmm. um i I like the word resurgence because i think that's kind of the the because it's never i will say this it has never not been popular or it's never not been a thing let's let's true it's been true. there it's always been there it's been there since the 70s it's just not been as like as i kind of was mentioning like as like mainstream as as like accessible right um I think, and, and and also like fourth edition it kind of had a slump oh yeah a lot of people 
I'm not saying that fourth edition wasn't good. Just a lot of people <laughs> didn't like it. Yeah. I just want to make that clear. I kind yeah. of enjoyed myself for the for the fourth edition games I played. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do like how D- Lloyd also mentions that once again, it's D and D is just one system. Mm-hmm. There are plenty. It's like as uh, Lloyd makes the analogy, think of it like D and D is EA and indie games. It, and indie games exist. So mm-hmm. uh Shatterrun, uh GURPS, uh, uh, uh you know, Pathfinder. Nice. Pathfinder. Starfinder. Yeah, uh, they, there's there's a plethora of different uh uh tabletop role playing games or mm-hmm. RPGs. Um and <laughs> but uh uh it, it's it so if D and D isn't your jam, but you still the idea yeah. of the role playing game um, uh, is something that you might be interested in. You, you can look it up. I mean, if you go to roll, just if you go to roll twenty and look for an online game, you, yeah. you can see they've got a shit ton load of yeah. of different games. I think yeah. we should be wrapping up because we're just like chatting on and well, on. Well, I will. And on. I will say this to kind of wrap things up a little bit. Uh, part of the list I gave, um, if you are interested in playing, then look at the second list, find some ideas, maybe go to Roll20, think of that. If you want to like hear or watch streams, we have obviously the, the one that Jeff is running um, on COL, the Bears and Dragons, or Bears and, Bears Bears and Dragons. Dragons. Bears, Bears and Dragons. I was going to say Bears and Dungeons, like that's a whole other thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, there are a bunch of other ones. These are, this is just a very small list that I came up with right before we started the show. I added uh, a couple things. Yeah. I'm sure you'll find different ones out there. Um, but yeah, um, there's one that I can't remember the name of that Jim actually just pointed out to me um, a couple weeks ago in which they're playing. It's, it's, it's Dungeons and Dragons with puppets. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say puppets? Yeah, I did. Thank you, sweetie. Stuff of legends. Thank you. I will try to find that one really quickly. But yeah, it'll, it'll but be yeah. on the list. It will be on the list. Yeah. And, All right. And I think with so, that. Yeah. Talk. I mean, to, so to, to wrap it up, as uh, technically, it does meet definition. There has been an increase or revival of interest, activity, popularity, that kind of stuff for D and D. Um, we're obviously not going to be able to cover it all in this episode. There's so much thanks to the two of you for putting the information together um, for folks to learn more and to get mostly involved. Damon. Um, yeah, but you, you helped. It's like, bit. you know, uh, shit. What the hell was that commercial? Shake and bake. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, I think there's more to come on this. Uh, Wow, that was really bad phrasing. Um, <laughs> but you know, the, I think we'll have uh, further discussions. I'll be, I'll be curious to see how, how things continue on. But um, I just wanted to like kind of recognize that there's, that there, it, it's not to me like uh, this. This falls in line with a lot of stuff that's been happening over the past decade. The rise of the nerd, the rise of the geekdom, like in terms of pop culture. Um, podcasts, popularity, you just have to look at the entertainment industry. You know, we've talked a ton about like, you know, comic books and like all of those things and the genres that have come about. I think D&D is all a piece of that like huge uh, sphere of things. So mm-hmm. more to come on that. When Terry right. Crews plays D&D. Mm-hmm. Anyways, yeah, I think I think that is the end. <laughs> Otherwise, we could go on for a couple more hours. Anyways, well, yes. Play ways to contact us. Give us your thought, your thoughts in regards to Dungeons and Dragons. And hey, even uh, uh, just the, the, the role playing games in general. Uh, you can pop over to our website, comes out loud com. Shoot us an email, it comes out loud at gmail dot com. Leave us a voicemail with your D and D character voice at. Uh, <laughs> 361 COL Talk, that's 361 265 8255. Also, on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube, at Comes Out Loud in the appropriate place in the URL. Although, I don't know why Instagram isn't on there. 
we not doing Instagram anymore? Uh, no, not really. The, so here's the issue with Instagram. You can't put in links easily. Like it's 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 a visual medium. It's not meant to like be a blog. I don't know how to say that. Mm-hmm. So anyways, it makes it it makes it really difficult because basically all that goes up is the image of the logo of the show. And then you have to kind of read the description to try to get the link. And um, anyways, anyways it's complicated. Story. Anyways, uh, you can join our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Find out when we're recording these shows at cal- uh, tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can get merchandise such as a uh, uh, comes out loud shirt or a sloppy bottom 23 shirt uh, over at uh, uh, zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud. And uh, we, I'm not speaking ill of fourth edition. You do not need to cancel. (laughs) I'm just saying everybody else didn't like fourth edition. Mm -hmm. Um, But you can become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud. You can also send us some some cash. We've got a renewal of our hosting coming up, which is usually kind of expensive at paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can follow us on Apple podcasts uh, or Subscribe to us, rate us at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon, Audible, probably anywhere else that they're directory of podcasts. Um, you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Up, Box Puppy, Box Cup, Box something or other, and also as uh, Windgem, W Y N D G E M, on Twitch, where usually I stream Bears and Dragons, but sometimes that ends up going to YouTube because uh, Twitch is being a jerk. <laughs> nice. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me most sites as Theater Cub Seven Nine, um, are on Facebook that way, are on Twitch actually as Theater Cub Seven Nine. There you go. Not that I do anything on there. Um, I have an account. <laughs> or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you could pretty much find me anywhere online as Gare Bear Seven Three. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now.